they want to survive the wild card series. The dream lives! Don't go looking back to see. Welcome to the 2022 Wildcard Series on ESPN, presented by Han Cook Tire. It's been a minute. Mets back in the postseason, first time since 2016. They won 101 games. The Padres back after a one-year hiatus, and boy, did they look different. You just saw Juan Soto. This is a series of superstars and expectations for both teams when the season started. And then when the trade deadline happened, we're to win World Series. Eduardo Perez and, of course, a New York legend, David Cohn. I'm Carl Ravitch, Buster only in just a minute. Wild card, this is the fourth of the series today. The starters, with one exception, Alec Manoa. The ERA for those guys is 080, and there's a really good chance you see a low-scoring game with the two guys we have tonight in you, Darvish and Max Scherzer. Well, it is the name of the game, right? Power pitching versus power hitting. That usually tells the story in postseason, and it's going to be no different here with these guys on the mound. And even though last weekend in Atlanta didn't go their way, these are still really good pitchers and guys you don't really want to bet against. They get another chance to re hit the reset button, and Max Scherzer is comfortable for any manager when he's on the mound and, and starting a game one. So there's no argument there. And on the other side, you got to think about the Padres matching up with these guys. Well, in their own right, you look at those numbers, you Darvish, unbelievable year all over and then finishing strong along with Blake Snell and Joe Musgrove. And the thing about those three is they can miss some bats as well. They can shut down offenses uh, just like the Mets can. Yeah, you mentioned it. This has been as good a season as Darvish has had. He continues to create new pitches and we'll see them all in just a moment. Offensively, this is a series of superstars. Both teams paid a lot of money, traded for them, and those are the guys that are going to have to carry their teams. And yeah, we'll see them in the top half of the first inning. It all starts with Machado and Soto in no particular order. These two are the epicenter of their offense. On the other end, you got Francisco Lindor and Pete Alonso. When you talk about power from the Mets, this is where it has to come from. It's been their constant their entire season. If they're able to get the young guys on board, let Lindor, let Alonzo carry them. It'll be the first pitch when we come back. And the big story for the New York Mets is that Starling Marte returns to the field. He'll hit six. He'll play right field. We'll get into how he's back on the field when we come back. Max Scherzer on the mound. Padres and Mets right after this. Here, 42,000 Phil City Field for the Padres and the New York Mets. And for the New York Mets, kind of a surprise, Darling Marte back in the lineup. He hasn't played since September 6th. And leading into this game, Mets were pretty vague and cryptic about how this was going to work, whether Marte was going to be available at all for this postseason. But I know this, Max Scherzer and the rest of the Mets are a much better team when Starling Marte is on the field and playing. We'll get a report from Buster only in just one second as the New York Mets, Max Scherzer, kind of like a lion in a cage, is ready to charge out of that field and it will send City Field into a frenzy. Buck Showalter and Bob Melvin shake hands at home plate before they head back to their respective dugouts. They get a pose for a picture. Now that that is done, the New York Mets should get set to take the field. Just what the Mets in there. Ownership group, their fans expected this team in the postseason, perhaps not in a wild card game, but in the postseason with Max Scherzer on the mound in game one. Take a look at the numbers for Max Scherzer in ERA of 229, 145 in a third innings. Little concerned about the oblique here lately because he and DeGrom and Bassett all suffered some significant pain during that recent Brave series in which they were swept. But every time he takes them out in the postseason, he continues to climb 
the list of his contemporaries. Topped by Kershaw, Verlander is going to move past him, and then Clayton will get a chance to perhaps reclaim the lead. 160 strikeouts among the most all-time in baseball history. So you're taking on a San Diego Padre team that won 89, lost 73. They finished 22 games behind the Los Angeles Dodgers. They walk a lot, they're very patient, and they'll nickel and dime you. They do not have a lot of slug. They ended up slugging 382. That was 22nd in baseball. But it's rare when you have somebody like Soto and Machado. Josh Bell hurt the Mets when he was with the Nationals earlier this year. Will Myers has success against fastballs. Very few of the other Padres do. It'll be Trent Grisham, who's a terrific center fielder, and Austin Nola will bat ninth. Jerickson Profar will lead things off for San Diego. He's the left fielder, and... All eyes are on Max Scherzer to see how he does. Mets will immediately shift against Profar. Lindor moves to the right side of the second base bag. And there we go. First pitch swinging. Lindor has to go chase it. He will not get there. And Profar leads off with a bloop single. One thing the Padres are going to have to do early is swing early and often against Max Scherzer. That's when he's been going with the fastball. As of late, he's gone with the slider, but they know his pedigree. It's the number one he has to establish. Well located off the end of the bat. Well located pitch, well located hit. And that brings up Juan Soto, acquired at the deadline with Josh Bell. The right fielder has been a lot better lately. Really struggled the first month, month and a half when he was traded over here. And of course Scherzer and Soto were on the same World Series winning team in Washington in 19. And he bends one in for a strike. Curveball at 75. 68 degree night here in New York. The wind at least at the top of the stadium blowing out towards right. One misses high. This is the ultimate take pitches walk man in Major League Baseball. You get the sense that there's a lot of heat on Soto. You know, the big expectations from the trade deadline didn't really go as he had planned in the Padres, but gets a chance to hit the reset button in postseason. And he has had massive success here at City Field on the 1-1. In there, strike two. 95 miles an hour. Taking a look at it, 11.73. OPS at City Field since it opened in 2009. And a 350 average against the Mets with a 464 on base this year. Damage done when he was with the Nats. Scherzer ahead, 1 2. Soto took it. He gets into that shuffle and it just misses to even it up 2 and 2. Close pitch. I'm a Mets fan. I want that call. That's in the box, right at the knees. Perfectly played. Soto getting the benefit of the doubt because of the good eye that he's had his entire career. So Soto gets the benefit of the doubt early in his career. Scherzer's late in his career, and he doesn't get the benefit on a 2-2 pitch with Profar on first, and they will throw over. Except the infield behind Scherzer. It's Eduardo Escobar at third. Lindor is at short. Jeff McNeil is at second with Marte in right field. Pete Alonso's at first. Mark Hanna in left, Brandon Nimmo in center, Tomas Nito behind the plate. Two two, and he went. Scherzer got him with a cutter. Good sign early for Max Scherzer. If he's able to throw this pitch, and you mentioned Carl that his oblique injury probably was caused by the cutter and talking to Ron Darling does a great job covering the Mets he seemed to think that might be the case but nonetheless a really good one there next challenge for Max Scherzer is this guy Manny Machado he has been an MVP all season he has been the ballast for the San Diego offense of course Fernando Tatis with the suspension didn't play a game this year fractured wrist 
was set to come back and then suspended. So it's really been Manny Machado's team. First pitch, grounder, and that's pulled foul. Manny comes in 291 with 32 homers, Eduardo, 102 RBIs. He scored 100 runs, got 37 doubles. First pitch to Soto, curveball after the base hit at the first pitch to Profar, and this one right here, a slider at 85 miles per hour. He's only 8 for 50, but he does have two homers, 20 strikeouts at the hands of Max. This season, the Mets have been a decent team defensively, ninth in defensive efficiency, seventh in defensive runs saved, second best outs above average, plus 30. Certainly a different look to the Mets with that guy on second base and Marte in right field. 1 1 to Machado. Left field and playable for Marcana. Yeah, it's hard to overstate the impact that Marte has on the team defensively, offensively, and in the clubhouse. And, in the cl and on the base path. You think about all the attributes that he brings to this team. If you have elite pitching on the mound, this is the guy that you want hitting because he can handle both hard and soft from any pitcher right or left. As Josh Bell steps in, Buster, how'd they get Marte back for tonight? Yeah, it's a month and a day since he last played in his big league game. And two days ago, someone in the Mets organization told me, you know what, there's a chance he doesn't play again. But they've been trying to fit him with some sort of a splint, some sort of protective device on his finger. And you see it right there uh, that uh, on his right middle finger. He said it's like a compression band. He came out early yesterday before any media members are here. He took live batting practice. Mets were greatly encouraged by what they saw. Marte walked into Buck Walter's office and said, I'll play. <laughs> Buck was relieved to hear that as that pitch sails high to Josh Bell, the designated hitter. He didn't really want to argue with him, right? Just took that for any answers and said, okay, you're in. Let's not continue this conversation. Slam the door behind him, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the culture change that occurred in the offseason for this New York Met team. Arte in right, certainly Scherzer on the mound, Canna in left. Dang, dang. And the culture change happened quickly in Port St. Lucie as soon as they met with Marte and they said, I know you signed as a center fielder. We gave you center field money, but guess what? We need you in right field and this is why. Your arm, your range, it plays bigger at City Field and right. They shift against the power hitter. Bell 17 homers on the year, and Scherzer just misses down, and now he's behind 3-0 with Jake Cronenworth on deck. Bob Melvin right here, I give him the green light. He's been struggling as a Padre. The best thing you can do with two outs, 3-0 count, runner at first, is let the big man swing it. 11 games against the Mets, a 385 average. Since he put this Padre hey. uniform on, it's been a very different story for Josh Bell. Yes. Called strike. And you've seen some of this over his career. There are peaks and valleys, but it is, it's been really bad in San Diego with a 192 average and an OPS plus, really half of what it was when he was Washington. Here it comes on a 3-1. That one is laced deep to left field, and this one may get out of here. It does! Bell on a 3-1 pitch, his 18th of the year, and the Padres take Scherzer out and grab a 2-0 lead. Josh Bell on 3-0, it was a beautiful take. Yes, sir. Reason being, the pitch was outside corner. He's looking middle in, watch his feet. Sees the pitches away, I'll take. Falls back a little bit right there. He's like, okay, I've got this. Next pitch, leaks out over the plate. This one just a little bit more inside than the last one. Flips about and he knew it. Beautifully balanced. What a great start for Josh Bell after struggling since he's 
since he arrived in San Diego. It may be the Met uniform. Mentioned he had had great success against him in a two-run shot. Traveled 419 feet. Padre score first. Now Cronenworth. Hi. Max breaks a curveball in there for strike one. A lot of talk, too, leading into this series, how the Mets would use mm -hmm. Scherzer and then either Bassett or DeGrom without really telling the story. It certainly feels like if the Mets were to win the game, DeGrom would be saved for game three and then used again to start a Dodger series if they win game two. If not, he pitches game three. The 0-2 stays alive. I mean, that is what the conversation it's been in New York. It's been all about Cody. Yeah, you cannot let the season end without him pitching. So obviously, if the, the Mets lose this game, he's in there. But Josh Bell, with a reminder, what kind of talent he has, right? We talked about his struggles since he came over. The big first half he had in Washington just showed up here tonight. 0-2 from Scherzer, and okay. that right. just misses. Adrian Johnson calls balls and strikes. Second pitch already this inning that Max has not had go his way. That's a here. Another one just off. Tight strike zone early in this game. See Nito back there in the tra traditional crouch of a catcher. Yeah. And generally speaking, the new school with one knee gets you those low calls. Allows you to frame better. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him fishing. Scherzer strikes out both Soto and Cronenworth, but he couldn't get by Bell. He rings up another homer, his 18th of the year, and all sorts of emotion starts on the side of San Diego. We'll see the Mets offense for the first time when we come back to City Field. Yankees, Arizona, Texas, Baltimore. Now the New York Mets on his managerial resume. His team will bat for the first time and they trail two zip. It'll be Nimmo, Lindor, McNeil, Pete Alonso, Daniel Vogelback, Starling Marte, who has traditionally been a number two hole hitter for the Mets, but now in his first game back, will bat sixth. Canna Escobar, who's been outstanding lately, and Tomas Nito, the catcher. All right, Coney, you Darvish stake to a two nothing lead. Yeah, and he's the right guy on the mound for the Padres. Is his 83% quality start percentage was the best in the National League. 25 quality starts this year, averages 6.5 innings. And two First great start. ones against the New York Mets. Brandon Nimmo, center fielder. Darvis gets the call, and that gets the 42,000 here. A little upset. That was a call that Scherzer didn't get in the top half. 16 homers, 64 runs batted in, 30 doubles for Nimmo. Machado went on the grass at third. Maybe as creative a pitcher as there is in Major League Baseball, you Darvish. He can do anything with the baseball, spin it, make it break right to left or left to right. It almost like too many things he can do with the baseball. <laughs> so simplifying has really served him well. First pitch strikes and his walk rate at a career low this year. Ahead 0-2, and that one misses. There was a period this year where Darvish won six straight starts, late August to late September, and three of those starts were scoreless. He's got Machado at third behind him. Hassan Kim is a defensive wizard at shortstop. Cronenworth is at second. Will Myers plays first. With Profar in left, Trent Grisham in center, and Soto in right. And Nimmo hard on the ground, Cronenworth. The first for the first out. Well, Manny Machado is the MVP candidate for the Padres. Francisco Lindor is the MVP candidate for the New York Mets. The shortstop having a terrific season, a 270 average, 26 homers, 107 RBIs. He has stolen 16 bases, 25 doubles. A 
and his war. It's just shy of seven. Padres, who don't shift all the time, will shift against Lindor batting from the left side. Nearly got hit on the back foot. And it may have hit him. It did, so Lindor will take first base. He didn't seem to react to it. But Adrian Johnson, the home plate umpire, said yes. Interesting, Lindor didn't react at all, yet he points down. Adrian Johnson bites on that one. Hard to tell whether the foot deflected it or the dirt did. Either way, it's another hit by pitch for the New York Mets team that set a record this year. And now the National League batting champion, Jeff McNeil. Keep an eye on the Mets. They will run against Darvish, and they do right away. Lindor head first slide, and he's in there safely. You're going to see a lot of that. The Mets, this has to be the game plan. Stolen bases at this year, 32-38 versus the, pa versus the Padres. They're going to take advantage of Darvish. They're going to take advantage of Nola behind the plate as well. The highest percentage of stolen base success is against the Padres, 87% of the time. So McNeil now has Lindor in scoring position. 2-0, and it's interesting, the crowd after that two-run home run from Bell was kind of quiet. It didn't take long for them to get right back into it. Yeah, they understand the importance of striking right back. Big game, you got to punch back. McNeil a lot more patient this year than ever before the batting champ. The same way that Bell has historically hurt the Mets. McNeil lifetime, a 351 hitter against San Diego. A 455 on base. They will throw back and Lindor drives back safely. Major improvements for the Mets this year. Runners in scoring position, 269 average, which is tied third. Last year, 238, which was 25th. McNeil into right field. Late jump for Lindor. Soto has it, and there will be no run for the Mets. Door froze for a second, but runners are on the corners for Pete Alonso. How about Lindor at second base, speeding up Darvish, making him quick pitch towards the plate. And because of it, pitch right down the middle, cutter, base hit. Good job by Lindor freezing. That's exactly what he has to do. Doesn't know if it's going to be caught by Myers or not. Sees it through. He's got the big man coming up to the plate. And that big man is Pete Alonso. 40 homers. Tied Aaron Judge for the most RBIs with 131. And Alonso hammers it, but it's going to go foul as he jumped all over that first pitch sinker. Darvish again, quick to the plate. With McNeil at first. Everybody at City Field down on the infield seats are on their feet as Lindor plays cat and mouse with Darvish. Alonzo swing and a miss.
Well, how big is it to answer here with your biggest hitter up first and third, one out? How important? Well, well, it's important not only, excuse me, Eduardo, for your own, for your own team confidence, but this crowd gets right back in this game. They're ready to roar. 0-2, Kim and Cronenworth, very good up the middle defense. They look for an Alonzo ground ball. This is where Darvish loves to throw the splitter in a first base. Definitely no Kirby's telling McNeil right now, watch the ball in the dirt. Called strike three, Alonso frozen on a cutter at the bottom of the zone. And a huge strikeout for Darvish. I think Pete was also looking for the splitter. This is something that Darvish has done in his previous two starts against the Mets. If he gets the cutter to two strikes, he goes splitter. This time he crosses up Pete, thinking it was going to dive out of the zone. It stayed right there for the called third strike. Here comes the designated hitter, Daniel Vogelback. Struggles against the breaking ball. Really good against the fastball. Darvish gets ahead, 0-1. Third straight postseason that Daniel Vogelback has been in, the Brewers, the last couple of years. 17 home runs as a designated hitter, which tied Bryce Harper for most in the National League. Oh, and two. Almost some backup action on that cutter from Darvish there. Gets on top of it, tries to backdoor it. Vogelbach very selective, generally speaking, at the play. Now down 0-2. And Doerr nearly a quarter of the way down the third baseline. Runner goes second. That's McNeil. He's going to go back to first on a foul ball. Designated hitter has been an issue for the Mets this year. They. Brought in Darren Ruff from the right side. Didn't exactly work out. Vogelbach trying to pick up the left side. When he came here, he did really well to start. Oh, and two. Seven straight strikes from Darvish. And Vogelbach, right field, playable for Soto if it stays and it does in the corner. He makes it in fair territory. Did not drift foul enough. And the Mets will strand two. Lindor at third, McNeil at first. It's 2 nothing after one here at City Field. For you, Sarah, on the screen here at City Field, our teammate Sarah Langs divulged to the baseball community and those that follow her on Twitter that she is suffering with ALS. And many of us who know Sarah for a long time knew this, but now she's made it public. She described it as a weight off her shoulders. She was on our podcast with Buster only today. She is so focused on baseball and as many in this community know, loves this sport, will use this sport to help her in this. and. She knows that the community and certainly those of us at ESPN, part of her baseball family with MLB.com, et cetera, are all in support and send our love and prayers and offer any support that Sarah will need through this. She's working with us tonight behind the scenes, providing all the research and information. And we love Sarah and we, we wish her the best for sure. Always thinking about her. Absolutely. She makes us better. Bottom line. Yep. Love you, Sarah. One ball, two strikes. And thanks to the New York Mets and many other organizations that have 
recognize Sarah's contributions to really Major League Baseball and the community and the family. She told us today when Buster asked her on the podcast, what is it about baseball that you love so much? She talked about the consistency, how it's there every single night. And it's really in her family. It started with her grandfather, her grandmother. Her folks are both huge baseball fans, and she's made a wonderful career and has such a huge family supporting her. So Max Scherzer to Will Myers on a 2-2. And Myers on the ground, fielded cleanly by Eduardo Escobar. And throws across the diamond for the out. Big keys to the success of the Mets is defense, especially in the corners. They've struggled a bit, but as of late, Escobar has done a nice job over at third. Max Scherzer had only allowed five first inning runs in 23 starts this year, and of course gave up the two-run shot to Bell. And here's Hassan Kim, the shortstop. He swings at the first one. First postseason in the career of Hassan Kim, a former KBO superstar. He's reached base 16 of his last 18 games. Defense, defensive metrics love this guy. Yeah, he has played very well for them at shortstop this year. And when you think about league average offense with well above average defense, that kind of works. I am at 94 miles an hour. And that's a scouting report. Padres have not been a good fastball hitting team all year long. Hassan Kim, one of those. Yeah. In the KBO, you didn't see a lot of velo. That was going to be the big adjustment coming over to Major League Baseball. Max ready on a 1-2. And he got him fishing. Didn't go with the heat. Instead, a slider. Picks up his third strikeout of the night. Really good look at Max Scherzer slider. That's the slider that's going to take him right to the Hall of Fame when, when he's finished playing five years after. That's where he's going. And a lot of it because of that pitch right there. And to Eduardo's point, the Padres offense and velocity, they are last in run value. Minus 48 on pitches 95 miles or greater. The Dodgers are plus 30. 78 difference between the Dodgers who are the best at hitting fastballs at 95 and the Padres who are worst. It's another reason you win 111 games like the Dodgers. 1-0 to Grisham. He's the center fielder with two down. You know, for me, Scherzer, it's more about the mix of pitches. You see 94, 95. He doesn't have the DeGrom 100 mile an hour fastball, but he has a unique release point and also a great mix of pitches. This ball to right, going back is Marte, still going back. It's carrying, and it carries over the wall. Trent Grisham's 18th on the year, and the Mets, who got stung by the home run ball against the Braves, have given up two tonight. They've given up two tonight to two players that have been struggling coming into the postseason. Not only have they been struggling, they've done it with two outs. Both Bell and this time with Grisham. The wind is blowing out to right. That's for sure. It did not sound like he hit it in the sweet spot. Yet it did go like he hit it in the sweet spot again. Puts that foot down. Marte continued to just track the baseball until there was no further room. And we saw that ball carry when Vogelback hit it into the corner and right, it kept pushing. Mentioned the flags blowing out to right early. Escobar to his right, snares it, and gets Nola. But again, the team, the Padres, not known for their slug. Right, Scherzer out of the yard one more time. It's been Josh Bell and Trent Grisham. San Diego has got a 3-0 lead heading to the bottom of the second.
Hankook tire evolutionized for EV fitment. Electrified Hankook, and in part by Dell Technologies. We'll stop at nothing to bring out the innovator in all of us. Max Scherzer's allowed two homers in a postseason game for the fourth time. What a turnaround. Mets had first and third, couldn't score. And then the home run to Grisham. 3-0 San Diego, bottom two. We'll start with Starling Marte back in the lineup for the first time since September 6th. This is the story in the postseason, certainly the last few years. Teams that hit homers win games. And today, 56% of the runs scored were via the home run. Really, were it not for the Cardinals' bullpen meltdown against the Phillies, that number would be a lot higher. Marte up the middle, and Kim can't get it. Welcome back, Starling Marte. He's aboard with a single, and he's a threat to run. Is it that easy? Again, you work the count, 2-0, two, oh, two non-competitive pitches to start off. He goes with the cutter. Starling hits it right back up the middle. When you get a base hit, Tony, that finger does not hurt at all. There's some guys that could just roll out of bed and get a knock on their first swing. Starling Marte is one of those guys. Tony, you're surprised he didn't eat the way that Darvish pitched him there? A little bit. I would have tested him in, but Darvish seemed to Maybe fall behind there, kind of yanked a couple of pitches away, but I would have tested him in with some two-seamers or fastballs in. Well, we'll keep an eye on Marte, which is exactly what Darvish is doing. 18 stolen bases. Another part, too, is he's diving back in with that finger on that right hand. He's got a big glove on there. Only on that base, so when he goes back in, he'll go to the outside of the bag at second base if he decides to steal. Mark Hanna. Follows it straight back. The three hitters that Darvish has fallen behind in this game so far have gotten on base. When he gets ahead, they've all been out. Still early. see a lot of those after what Lindor did on his first chance. Second base from Cronenworth is shaded not to the third base side of second. Marte does go. Ball bounces. Nola didn't even need to throw it. Double clutched it. Marte's got the net second stolen base of the night. This is what I was talking about earlier when Marte will go. He will slide to the outside part of the bag with a bad finger or not. This is just what he does. Double pump by Nola. No chance with that velo. Yeah, you're right, Carl. This is something when the Mets get on first, we'll see all night because Darvish himself pretty slow to home plate. RBI opportunity for Canna. Darvish gets the strike call at the bottom of the zone. Canis left the building 13 times this year, 61 runs batted in, and his on-base percentage of 367 is sixth best in the National League. certainly contributed to the Met hit-by-pitch record this year. And in fact, he's been hit 14 times his last 36 games. Good job by Nola behind the play. That came up well short. The Darvish needs to sort of get back to establishing his fastball. Sometimes he gets a little breaking ball spin happy. And then one after the other, and then when you start bouncing them, then you get into hitters' counts. Got a three to nothing lead here. You need to pound that strike zone. Put the onus on the Mets. The 
it's interesting because having conversations with evaluators around the league, that's one thing that they've told me about you this season. He nibbles a lot, but he's consistent with every pitch in and out of the zone. There's a purpose for most of the pitches that he throws out of the zone. It's frustrating sometimes, even with the score 3-0, but he sticks to it. Here comes the 2-2 to Canna. He fouls that off. A good pitch right there because what you do when you throw your four seamer, you protect your cutter and all your other pitches. Good job by Kana to, to foul that pitch off. But this will set up the cutter and all the spinning breaking balls. And he beat him there. He's late. So you, you give Mark credit for fouling it off. But there's a purpose to that pitch as well. Now you can get back to spin if you want. I'm not asking you to get inside Darvish's head, but it's clear that the base runners are affecting him. His pace is much slower. And one of the things Darvish has done this year, perhaps to be even more effective, is pitch with greater pace. And Canna, shallow right. Soto coming. Catches it in fair territory. Fires it back in. Unable to advance Marte to third. Canna flies out to right. Good job of reading the bat. Doubling up with a fastball. I wonder if in the hitters meeting for the Mets, if they just said, you know what, he's not throwing a lot of fastballs. Let's hunt Cutter. Maybe 0-2 with two strikes, a splitter he likes to go with it. We saw what happened to Alonzo. And right there, Canna just a little bit behind on the heater. Yeah, he beat him twice in a row. Two four-seamers after all those cutters. Eduardo Escobar had a terrific September after coming back from the IL at the end of August. First pitch is in there. Letter high, strike one. He's got to change the looks on Marte at second base. Kim is on the right side of second base and real close to Marte at second. Not a big lead. Now takes another step, doesn't go, and the pitch is high. So Escobar was a 343-93-649 slash line in September. He was the player of the month. He had 24 RBIs in 26 games. He also had eight homers. Yeah, his left-handed swing has really come around. First half, his right-handed swing was pretty good. His lefty struggled. Yep. Now it's it's all there. And if he can elevate a ball to right, we've seen it carry. 1-1. Chance on that pitch, two and one with Tomas Nito, the nine hole hitter in the on deck circle. Three twenty one since September. Much needed slugging for this Mets offense as well, especially at the bottom of the order. Mets. Four days in first place than any team in baseball the last two years, and they led, of course, by ten and a half games in the division entering June. They played well. They didn't play as well as the Atlanta Braves, who came like secretariat down the stretch and caught them in the second to last series to move ahead. They finished tied with 101 wins, but the Braves, by virtue of winning ten of the 19 meetings, Ended up avoiding the wild card. Two and one to Escobar. Three and one. Two pitches before that, Darvish looked over twice. This time, it looks like Nola had told him just focus on the hitter. Didn't it? Didn't even look at Marte. Better now, though. Well, obviously, using no pitch com as they're giving the traditional signs here with Darvish. So that's going to take longer. That's why they had the pitchers meeting, the yep, bound meeting, yep. talking through things. Change it up. First three ball count for Darvish. Here it comes. There goes Marte. Throw to third. He steals another one. It was a called strike to Escobar, so he will bat three and two. But Marte has stolen two bags. That's a statement right there by Marte. 
It's a different look Mets team. You can't handle the run game and the Padres this year have not been able to do it. And this one's on you Darvish not on Nola. Good Let's timing go. picked a 3 0 count Darvish didn't make him stop. Well done by Marte. Four count. Darvish hesitates, fires, and he gets Escobar up in the zone, an 87 mile an hour cutter. And Darvish is now one out away from getting out of it. One of the ability to have that strikeout pitch, right? He got it on Alonzo with runners at first and third. This time gets it up in the zone with the slider on, on Escobar pretty good thing to have in your back pocket. Well, it is. You know, the thing is, is that the ball was up. It looked like Escobar thought it was going to stay up, and at the last minute, it's almost like, uh-oh, that might come back down, and he had to go for it. Little indecision. Not sure that's where Darvish was trying to throw it, but certainly. There have been a few cutters that haven't been where traditional cutters would yes. go. Now it's up to Tomas Nito, the number nine hitter. Late on that. 0-1. This is what Darvish wants to do, the hesitation with the leg kick. That's why the running game has forced him out of his rhythm a little bit. Now no chance of a stolen base, you can see him. Now he can do whatever he wants in terms of slowing down his delivery or having a bigger leg kick. Mets really struggled against the Braves in that series with runners in scoring position. And Nito will send Myers towards the dugout and it will get out of play. Tony, you're right about that, though. He looks a lot more calm with the runner at third than he did with the runner at second base. Looking at the scouting report, put it in his back pocket. That's the quandary for every pitcher is, is the quality of my pitch is going to suffer if I try to quicken up my delivery and abbreviate my leg kick, or do I just say, go ahead and steal and let me worry about the quality of my pitches and do my normal leg kick? Against Atlanta, the Mets were four for 18 with runners in scoring position. And Nito hits this one to left field. Profar says he's got it. And now the center fielder comes over and Trent Grisham takes it away. That ball blew toward center field and the Mets, two innings in a row, will leave a runner at third base. Padres group assembled a super team and they stumbled when one of their stars Tatis got suspended. Manny has mashed all year he's been great so can San Diego sail towards a deep playoff run and there is no judging this New York team the Mets made a big splash in the offseason and for the owner Steve Cohen it has paid dividends. Bottom line for that guy though it is World Series or bust this entire organization built that way and truly so was San Diego with that blockbuster trade they made a deadline and then the Tatis news broke and they took a gut punch and they were kind of reeling for a while and they have settled it back in here towards the latter part of the regular hey. season and have a three nothing lead as we start the third back to the top of the order Scherzer has given up a couple of homers to Josh Bell and Trent Grisham Profar led this game off with a bloop single and came in on the Bell homer uh. Well, nobody provided more excitement around the trade deadline than the Padres. Oh. So much excitement that uh, they sold a bunch of season tickets for next year based on the trade deadline. Ooh, pulled way foul. Yeah, you're right. It wasn't just Soto and Bell. Josh Hader was the day before. You ultimately felt like you were trading for the best closer in baseball. So A.J. Preller and the owner, Seidler, all in, you know, all in on trying to do this. And you look forward to seeing Blake Snell, Joe Musgrove, who they gave $100 million to. It is oh. a World Series quality team, certainly more so with Tatis in the middle of it. Let's not forget also they got Brandon Drury from the Cincinnati yep. Reds to match up against lefties. Mets again shift against Profar, and he rolls one over. Door's going to have to quickly get it to first by a half a step. Right, 
Well, as we're watching, as we watch everything, even warming up in the bullpen before, is he frustrated? What's going on? Is that normal? Hard to read, but is he feeling something? And then obviously the first inning, Josh Bell. And then another home run in the second inning. You can tell by the body language from Max Scherzer. Is his full repertoire available to him? And as I said, I talked to Ron Darling, who does a fantastic job at SNY along what? with Keith Hernandez. And, and Gary obviously do a great job. But he said Max has kind of shied away from his cut fastball, which is a big weapon for him, especially into lefties. And we haven't seen a lot tonight either. That's right. Oh, uh -uh. What do you want to do? Not getting the call at the bottom of the zone. So Juan Soto at the count even one ball, one strike. A lot of expectations on Juan Soto when he was dealt. Some believe that may have affected his ability to be so productive because when he's right, he is as productive as there is. And a Scherzer changeup. Put Soto in a one-two hole. Yeah, you got to find another way, and that's what Max has always been able to do his whole career. Is Go to plan B. You got to stop them right here and give your team a chance to come back on the Met side. Oh. Is the Soto shuffle a little more pronounced in the postseason on the East Coast than it's than it's been the last few weeks? Well, new numbers now. Throw away the 342 or the three or the 236 that he hit for the Padres. On the ground, slow roller. He's flying, but he's not going to be able to beat out the play as McNeil comes up throwing to get him. It's one of the things that the Padres saw a lot of with Juan Soto, a lot of rollovers. Max Scherzer is not challenging him with the fastball. One thing that Soto's been able to do is handle the fastball well up the middle the other way. But it's been the off-speed pitch that he tends to roll over on. Yeah, for plan B for Scherzer tonight is a changeup to lefties. A couple of good ones this inning. A couple of rollovers, and here's Manny Machado, the 31 year old. Good pitch there. Machado, of course, in February of 19, signed with the Padres, 300 million over 10 years. Can opt out after 2024. Anybody see that happening? Might have to think about it. Got to think about it. If he has another year like this one in 24, watch out. Uh, I think we've all seen Manny Machado evolve into sort of a clubhouse leader. Yeah. Somebody who leads by example now, the way he plays. How vocal he is now. Will not offer. It's off the plate two and one. And in this game, because these managers have been around so long and these teams have changed so dramatically. Of course, Buck Showalter managed Manny when he was with Baltimore. And he's got five 30 homer seasons before the age of 30. This one will not carry over the wall. Marte is there. And Scherzer has that shutdown inning after giving up Two homers in the first two, they go one, two, three. Mets will try to get some runs when they go one, two, three after this. A good pitcher, we got our hands full. Fuck, thanks. Call back to you. to home plate umpire Adrian Johnson. What was that conversation about? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> umpire Adrian Johnson. What was that conversation about? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Anybody had tell me you, Buster, but no, we're just uh, talking about some things. Make sure we're prepared for it. It's nothing big. Yeah. What have you seen in Max Scherzer early in this game? Uh, some borderline play, uh, pitches. You know, he, had, he got a ball where he, he wasn't trying to get it. Kind of leaked on him with Bell, but... Uh, you know, turn some counts around. Now he'll, he'll find a step. We got a lot of confidence in. We got a good pitcher. We got our hands full. Buck, thanks. Call back to you. All right, Buster, thank you. Here's Brandon Nimmo to lead off the bottom of the third. 
Did Buck answer the first question with his answer to the second question when he started with a couple of borderline pitches? Was that <laughs> referring to the <laughs> Very first good. Question? Yes, good interpretation right there. <laughs> you got to understand Buck speak. And we do. I think worked with him and been around him for a long time. Nimmo Lindor McNeil. Not only is getting ahead important for you, Darvish, but keeping the runner off base has obviously been something that he's got to lock in on with those stolen bases already tonight. Three of them. Nimmo sky high on the infield. Hassan Kim there to make the play, and Nimmo retired. What's made you Darvish different this year? You you talk to the people in the Padres organization, they'll, they'll tell you scouting reports, pre-game prep, post-game recovery. Austin Nola says that's what he's dialed in on. Is that what you would interpret the difference as you look at that number? First since PV in 07 with 15 or more wins and an ERA below three and a quarter? Yeah, that's part of it and much more confident in attack mode. First pitch strikes, all-time career high. Walk rate, all-time career low. Maybe his strikeout rates come down a bit, but he's still a strikeout pitcher. That's a good combination. You're walking less. You're throwing a lot of first pitch strikes, and you're pitching deeper into games. 194 innings this season for Darvish. Lindor, that's a fair ball. It's knocked down, and Will Myers does a good job. And very economically, Darvish has two outs here in the third. You know, both of these fan bases have great local broadcasters in San Diego, Don Orsillo and Mark Grant. Mark Grant told me about you, Darvish. He's got a great cutter, he loves to throw it, but if he gets through the first two innings, he really starts to settle in, and that's when you see that hesitation with that leg kick. Yeah. When he's doing that double leg kick, he's starting to feel it, and that's when things start to lock in for you, Darvish. Bud Cat Grant, one of the best, Don Orsillo, all these good. <laughs> make me laugh. Yes, they are. Gary, Keith, and Ron on the Mets side. McNeil, left field, going back, still going back, right at the wall, and the catch is made. It took only five pitches for Darvish to retire Nimmo, Lindor, and Jeff McNeil. Josh Bell has already left the yard once. He'll lead things off for the Padres in the fourth. anybody can make adjustments you know from the last time he pitched against a guy and use other pitches it's him home runs from Bell from Grissom how big is that considering how they finish up the year no doubt you know we talked about it earlier it's a new season it's 0-0 these are two guys have been productive before off to a good start Bob thanks Carl back to you the way he likes to handle it I mean he changes his repertoire from game to game if anybody can make adjustments you know from the last time he pitched against a guy and use other pitches it's him home runs from Bell from Grissom how big is that considering how they finish up the year yeah, no doubt you know we talked about it earlier it's a new season it's 0-0 these are two guys have been productive before off to a good start Bob thanks Carl back to you Pat Buster thank you so we see Max Scherzer's first pitch and he's now Starting to throw a steady diet of changeups. That one to Josh Bell, as Tony said, that's what you'll see against lefties. Bell, 419 feet to left field for a homer his first time up. And there's not a lot of guys that have had success against Max, but Bell's one of them. Now, six for 13 with two home runs. This season, during the regular season, only Bryce Harper and Cal Schwarber went deep off Scherzer twice. Bell did it during the regular season and now today in the first at bat. Three one pitch. Almost the same pitch as a 3 0, and this time he was ready for it. 
You saw the difference now in the last swing he just had against that cutter. Might go right back to it. Lays off that. He's been hitting balls since he was four years old. He and his dad, Ernest, would go out to the backyard. His dad was a former track star and wide receiver at Southern University. And Josh had committed to play college ball at Texas, but the Pirates took him. And they signed him for a bonus of $5 million. And this time he does the same thing, but it looks like the park will hold it. Goes the other way, and Canna is there to make the play for the first out of the inning. All right, tomorrow, all four wild card series game twos. Rays and the Guardians, what a well-pitched game. McClanahan terrific for the Rays, and Shane Bieber and Jose Ramirez's home run. They got it done for the Guardians. That's noon Eastern ESPN2. Mariners roll into Toronto at 4 Eastern, and they won that game. Followed by the Padres and Mets at City. Those three games on ESPN deport this as well. Phillies and Cardinals go to 8.30 Eastern time, 7.30 Central, ESPN2. Alex Cora, of course, the manager of the Red Sox, but far more significant tonight is the brother of Joey Cora, who's the third base coach of the Mets. By the way, all four of those games, wild card tomorrow, are available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Some royalty in Puerto Rico, huh, Eduardo? Big time. God was. The Cora brothers. Cronenworth, Escobar into foul territory. Scherzer's get the first two. That town well represented here in New York. Francisco Lindor also from Caguas, Puerto Rico. The point that Bob Melvin made to us pregame was you scratch all the numbers that we had during the regular season. We get that they won 89 games. They were, I think, 12 games under, 24 and 36 against teams with winning records. Then you go into a postseason, and you know the Padres, if they actually do get by the Mets, and they go to the World Series, and they win, there's a chance they have to beat four 100-win teams on their way to a World Series. They have the pitching, and that's what you need in postseason. Give your offense a chance. And their starters can do that. The 0 2 will not chase. He's given up the home run to Grisham. Scherzer has retired six straight. Two balls, two strikes. Called strike three. Myers knew it right away. Seven in a row, back to back. One, two, three innings for Max Scherzer. And that strikeout was his fourth of the night. Pete Alonso will lead things off for the Mets and Max Scherzer. In a 3 0 hole to the Padres of San Diego. Enjoy the thrill of the postseason, the MLB app, get daily lineups, live pitch by pitch coverage, and more in our free app with over 150,000 reviews. Download the MLB app today. Darvish to Pete Alonso to start the bottom of the fourth. And this one is sky high, maybe playable. Myers coming hard, still coming. And he had a chance, but it bounces off the brick wall there. Didn't look like Nola got a good read on it. Again, the wind continues to gust. Every ball in the air is going to be a challenge. You know who he's getting no help from? Alex Cora, right there. <laughs> he didn't even stand up. <laughs> Tough play and a windy night here at City Field. Temperature is supposed to drop considerably tomorrow. 36 year old, 6'5, 220 pound U Darvish. Got a 3 0 lead, and no one count. Really good pitch. 
out of nowhere. He drops that 71 mile an hour curveball. Unfair. He'll drop ball. Keep him in the ballpark. That's what you want. Another 0 2 count for you. Fifth 0 2 count for Darvish. Did not miss by much as it cut right across the front of the plate. Guys, I've talked with friends of Darvish in baseball in the last few days. They told me that going to the Padres, he's really responded well to this coaching staff because they haven't tried to box him in with the way they use his pitches. They basically decided, you know what, he's an artist. He has a lot of pitches at his disposal. We're going to let him do what he loves to do. Look out, bat goes flying, and it will go off the screen. Alonzo strikes out. That is a great point that Buster brought up right there, and that is the right approach. Darvish is so talented. He could do just about anything with a baseball in his hand. So the, this staff went to him and said, you be you. Yes. Just like Bob Melvin with his interview with Buster kind of said that. Start to start, his repertoire can change. So sometimes it's better just to get out of the way when a guy has this much talent. Yeah. And earlier in the clubhouse, we had a conversation with Blake Snow, and he was saying, look, this guy does his own homework. He looks at video. He studies his very very precise in everything he wants to do. And for all of those that follow him on social media, he explains things very well with his approach. We'll go back. Strike Hi. one. So for Darvish, this is the 10th year in Major League Baseball, his 17th professional year in baseball. And only he and Hideo Nomo have 3,000 professional strikeouts. He was the quickest to 1,500 in the majors. Vogelback rolls one over. Myers says, I got it myself. You Darvish is starting to apply the sleeper hold, it feels like. I mean, there's so many variations of speed on his breaking ball package. We've seen curveballs in the low 70s. We've seen cutters and sliders anywhere from upper 70s to upper 80s. It's almost like he invents a pitch on the fly. One thing he's always been able to do is spin a baseball on an elite level. That, that seems like you're kind of selling it a little short. But they're, they're sick because there's like a variety of of sliders. There's yeah, there's, there's a range of speeds too. Right. Marte with two outs, ball one. And talking with Blake Snell before the game, there was almost this this awe, this reverence, this I, I could never do the things that he does with regards to that much time, that attention. He said he never puts the iPad down. He's constantly looking at video. Hey! Guys, there's a great story in MLB.com recently in which it was described how Darvis will see a particular pitch from another pitcher with another team, and he'll say, yeah, I want to throw that curveball. And he'll uh, examine it in video. He'll get information as much as he can and within a week, he can replicate that sort of pitch and maybe even put it in his own repertoire. One ball, two strikes. Snell and others would suggest he can actually do that during a game. Like I'm just going to introduce a new pitch, which speaks to the trust he has in himself. Absolutely. Well put, Carl. And it sounds like another uh, pitcher we saw this year change on the fly. Shohei Otani all of a sudden became a sinker slider guy out of nowhere and almost ran the table at the end of the season. His last 10 or so starts. One two on the way to Marte and he spoils one. And when Shohei Otani started throwing 99 mile an hour sinkers and two seamers out of nowhere and, <laughs> and then a whirly sweeping slider off of that it was like uh, I give up. Take, you know, I mean, how do you hit that. This is what Marte does during his at bats. He works the at bat, fouls off tough pitches. The Mets desperately missed him since that last hit by pitch that broke his finger. 
Eight for 18 in his career against Darvish. He got jammed there. We'll have a little race between Darvish and Marte, and you beats him to the bag. Good inning, and since giving up that single to Marte, he has retired nine in a row. Wildcard series on ESPN presented by Han Cook Tire. Have you ever wondered what players say on the field? You want to see celebrities try to hit a fastball? Are you interested in baseball culture in Latin America? Check out MLB Originals at MLB.com slash originals. So the Mets are 10 and 10 in games started by Scherzer and DeGrom since DeGrom came off the IL August 2nd. One zero to Kim. That misses two and zero. So the recipe, the formula, Scherzer Degrom, has let them down. And September was not a good month, especially given some of the competition. But as we've learned in baseball, just because the team's records under 500 hardly assures you of winning, let alone a game, a series. I thought a Pete Alonso had a great press conference yesterday, and they asked him. You know. Did we lose this in Atlanta? We, you know, he said, no, we got swept by the Cubs. We had plenty Hi. of other games where we could have closed the deal and won this division. And you know, to me, that just says a lot about Pete Alonso. He gets it. Mm -hmm. And Kim just reaches out and slaps that into right field, and the leadoff man is going to be aboard here. In the fifth inning, Hassan Kim leadoff single. First leadoff hitter on base since Jerkson Profar got on in the first pitch for the base hit. Poking it out there, protecting the plate. Pretty much doing him a favor with another slider. Last time he got him out on the fastball. He's getting ahead and then he went down and away with the slider in the dirt. To your point. That, that felt like we were watching a KBO game. For somebody that really struggles against velocity, right, Eddie, did him a favor. And here's Grisham, who took Scherzer out to right his first time up. This was the ball that just kept carrying. Scherzer knew it. He's thrown two pitches up in the strike zone, in the box, both pitches have left the yard that they've made contact on. Has to keep the ball down. Uh, uh, hold on here. Is there anything about the way that Scherzer is pitching tonight that would indicate that he's not 100% healthy? Well, the fact that he shied away from his cut fastball is kind of the first clue, because that's a big pitch for him to use against left-handed batters. The one that stays up and in, mm -hmm. a little flatter, but he can get back into counts with it. and set up all of his other pitches to lefties. Hey! There's one right there. But also his spin rate's down on a slider over 181 RPM. So if you look at the quality of his pitches, mm. not quite there. Four-seam fastball, almost 60 RPMs down. Not significant, but certainly notable. All of his pitches generally, the spin rate's kind of down. Oh! Padres do not steal much, but their best base stealer is on base. First with Kim. He's got 12 this year. Behind the eight hole hitter, Grisham. Here's the 2 1. Popped up, sky high. McNeil under it makes the play. Want to keep up with the postseason? Just tell Siri, show me MLB postseason scores. Well, day one of the wild card series. Been a great start for the Guardians. The Seattle Mariners, the Philadelphia Phillies came back against the Cardinal bullpen. And this is the fourth of the wild card series. 
It's 3-0 San Diego. Scherzer's deliver. This ball is rifled to right field. Marte going into the corner. He won't get it. That ball is fair. Coming hard is Kim. Steps on third, and that is going to be a ground rule double, which is a huge break for the Mets. It bounced off the line. So Kim will have to stop at third base. And Austin Nola is imploring his team to perhaps take a look. The third base umpire came in, and then he about faced it. Fair ball. Right on the line. That'll force the infield in, even with runners at second and third. Big break for the Mets. Kim would have scored easily. About the bottom of the Padres order. Kim with a single, Grisham a homer, Nola the nine hitter with a double. And now Profar sends this one to right field. It's headed to the corner. And that's fair, and it's gone. Jurickson Profar, three run home run. Three more runs for the Padres. And the third homer makes it six nothing San Diego. Four and a third innings for Max Scherzer, and he gives, gives up a first pitch double to Nola, and then a first pitch home run, and that got out of here in a hurry. A cutter at 89 miles per hour. Jerks and Profar, two for three so far in this game. Trying to get it in. You see where Nito is. Profar just beats him to it and is able to keep it fair. Quality of the pitch is not there that we usually see from, from Scherzer. The sharpness of the break, the tighter spin. If it's a little looser, it's a little less sharp. That's what happens. Jerickson Profar picks up Hassan Kim and Austin Nola on his run around the bases. And the crowd here at City Field is stunned. What a job by the bottom of the Padre order as Trevor May starts to warm up. And now, I mean, it's the fifth inning. You do have to think, you know, the best laid plans. Jacob deGrom will, if this continues, be on the mound for game two against Blake Snell, who's been terrific. Yeah, barring a big comeback by the Mets at this point, you cannot let your season end without Jacob deGrom pitching. One one to Soto. And another oh. breaking ball. Kind of opened up that box about is there anything about the way he's pitching that would indicate he's not 100% healthy? The fact that he's given up three homers shows you he's not he's not right. No, he's a gamer. He's pitching through. We know exactly. he's had an oblique issue. We know he's battled through it. The effectiveness certainly shows up on that graph right there in terms of the earned runs he's given up, the hits he's given up, the Ks are down. Yeah, the home runs allowed five in the last two games. Soto hits it on the ground in second. He's retired. Frustrating, too, of course, for the Mets and, and glory days for the Padres, who, again, turned the page into the postseason. And if you're going to get Kim on base and Grisham hitting homers and Austin Nola in the nine spot with a double, there have been signs towards the end. A guy like Nola's last eight games, over 300. 79 pitches tonight. Just yep. eight, eight swing and misses from the Padre hitters. Machado trying to add on. Laces this to left. Will it stay high enough? It does. Another home run by the Padres. The fourth allowed by Scherzer. 7-0 San Diego. That was a laser beam to left. And here comes Buck Showalter, and there goes Max Scherzer. Double, home run, double. All on the first pitch, 0-0. Oh, oh. San Diego Padres attacking Max Scherzer. Big time, four for eight with a double, two home runs on that first pitch. 
Max Scherzer, as he exits the mound, hears it from the City Field crowd. Last two starts, felt the worst for Max in a Met uniform. Booze. Serenade down from the 40,000 plus. Pollock, when you need your MVP to represent, he does. This is a big dagger. They were down six, nothing. That makes it seven, nothing. And it got out of here in a hurry. Padres are rolling via the home run. Next pitcher for the New York Mets with Max Scherzer out of the game with two outs in the right. fifth inning, having allowed four homers and seven runs is Trevor May. Right. His first pitch is a strike. It is unbelievable what home runs and seven runs does to a crowd of 42,000. Oh, I want to. It's hard to manage a game on Buck Showalter's side when the home runs leave so quickly. That's how these games get away from you. Seven runs on the board now. Hard to see it coming. It is, and it's a it's aberration. I mean, the Padres had hit three homers in their last four postseason games combined. Three in their last four games. It's the fourth time in the career of Max Scherzer. He's allowed four homers, but the first time in a postseason. Hey, hey. That's called strike three. Right at the knees, Bell is gone. And Manny and company didn't like that call, but they love the crooked number on the scoreboard. They have indeed quieted City Field so far. Profar, the last to go yard, then Machado. Seven, zip. New York Met fans, a little bit of an identity crisis. This is not the 101 win team, but the San Diego Padres have stormed into City Field and blasted four homers. Buck Showalter seeing to his bullpen. Yu Darvish has gotten nine in a row. Let's have two hits off Yu Darvish tonight. Padres have seven hits for homers. Here we go with Yu Darvish for his pitch. Hey! Good one in there to Marcana. Only 50 pitches for you, Darvish, to get through the first four innings. See Darvish going old school with the sort of the. The slash with the glove on the uniform to call his own pitches. I haven't seen that since Jimmy Key. You get the, sign, the traditional sign from the catcher and you just kind of swipe with your glove a couple of times if you want to change the sign. And Canna pops this one up. Cronenworth keeps Soto away. All right, you heard, before you do that, listen to this. right there sounds like slug for a team that doesn't slug very much you're absolutely right those four home runs statcast powered by Google Cloud would you have guessed that Josh Bells was the ball off the bat that was the least velocity would you have guessed that not at all I would have said pro far I would have said pro far but I'll tell you this 110.5 Looked more like 115.8. That got out of here in a hurry. You know, you've been touting the local broadcasters with 
Mudcat and Don Orsillo, and of course Gary and Keith and Ron. You're, you're underselling yourself with, with the Yankee broadcast with Michael and you and Paul. But this time of year, people are always wondering, you know, what happens to their local broadcasters. Hey. They are the cheerleaders in a sense, objective, but rooting for their home team. When you get into the national broadcasters, and it's not the same because this isn't who you cover. And I don't mean you don't know these guys. We know them really well. But you don't get that same, I know everything about the Mets, and we're rooting for the Mets. And tonight, this has been a hard one for Mets fans to watch, regardless of who's calling the game. Yeah, great point. Don Arcillo and Mark Grant, great, great job out in San Diego. And, of course, Gary, Keith, and Ron are some of the best. And, hey, Howie Rose, too. Don't forget about the radio guys, right? Absolutely right. Howie and Wayne. Howie Rose, a legend in his own right. Got a one ball, two strike count on Escobar. That ball's hit hard to center. Grisham going back, still going back. He leaps, and it's gone. Eduardo Escobar puts the Mets on the scoreboard and gives the folks here something to cheer about. That's Eduardo's 21st and first of the postseason. Saw it there. 99.5 miles per hour off the bat. Padres made a statement, putting four up in the top of the fifth, and Escobar at least gets one back. Gets the fans something to cheer about. Still a lot of baseball left. One of the reasons why you doesn't like challenging guys with the heater, even though the numbers indicate he should. doing some digging you doing some research well just about the the exit velocities on some of these home runs it was a little suspicious of well, the numbers we put up there at, well i think we just got one one a couple of them mixed we up flipped them yeah nito like so many pops another one up and soto and there to make the easy play Producer Andy Jacobson is suggesting that all precincts hadn't reported. There might have been a dangling Chad out there. Yeah, Josh Bell, that <laughs> monster he hit the left field, that, that wasn't 95. That was Profar's was 95.2 down on. It takes a pitcher to know, right? <laughs> yeah. He... <laughs> the one Escobar just hit was 99.5 miles an hour over his bat, so 402 feet. The ball definitely carrying here at City Field tonight. That might be a different story tomorrow with the weather's supposed to be much cooler tomorrow night. Yeah. Nimmo. That's a fair ball, and he can run. Heads down into the corner. Nimmo steps to second, and he looks, and now he's going to third. Soto, long throw. Not in time. Triple for Brandon Nimmo. Gets in safely with two outs, down six to third base. I think Joey Cora at third wanted him to stay at second just because you create havoc. With you, Darvish, with a runner at second. Soto showing off his arm. Making it a lot closer than what a lot of people thought. Nothing like a triple to get the crowd back in the game a little bit. No, the same inning as a homer. See what Lindor can do. First pitch way inside. Lindor has struggled against the breaking pitch from the left side. Hugh Darvis showing him the fastball in.
time that the Mets have had a runner at third base. Machado alone on the left side of the infield. The pitch to Lindor, big swing and a miss. And Eddie, that must look like a good pitch to hit, up in that strike zone. Well, you set your eyes up, especially against you, Darvish, because he throws so many breaking pitches. You tend to chase those, and exactly that looked really good, 85 miles per hour in the upper third quadrant. Pitch has been a headache for Lindor all season long. Just notice the variance in speed. The previous slider or cutter was 86, 87, up and away. That one 81, down and in. Similar spin, similar shape. Speed gets Lindor there and the location. Ahead one and two. Lindor sky high Machado should be an easy one for the third baseman and it is for strand another one at third the Mets are one for seven with runners in scoring position but Eduardo Escobar kisses one goodbye and it's 7-1. San Diego they lead the Mets and they have used the long ball the same way the Braves did in that devastating series for New York last weekend so Max Scherzer out last half inning Trevor May is in as we head to the sixth inning with David Cohen Eduardo Perez Buster only Carl Ravitch so the bullpen for the Mets will try to keep it here and they'll try to chip away at you Darvish in that bullpen let's go back to that last half just how crazy would it have been with only Machado playing shortstop and a runner at third and Lindor up to bunt down the third base and just get it to the left side. You get a run in and you could start running around Darvish with the stolen bases. Is that anti 2022 analytics because he's made it a home run. Looks like he was trying to hit a home run with, with the first swing right. Lindor's been trying to launch a lot and hitting more home runs as of late especially in the second half and McNeil coming up after that contact guy May gets the pop up he's looking for and Escobar is there and that'll retire Cronenworth we invite you to predict which players will stack the most total bases each day during the postseason you compete to win fifty thousand dollars Enter MLB base chase in the MLB play app or through MLB.com slash play. Restrictions will apply. You can see official rules for details. One down in the sixth. It's not a bad thought, Carl. I, you know, it's something that obviously is a little bit of a bygone era, I guess. But, you know, if you're trying to play to win the game, it, it's, it's a reasonable thought to say, you know what, I'm going to take a run here. Let's try to keep the line moving. So it certainly uh, would have excited this crowd. Well, Myers nearly sent that straight back up here, top of the screen. Especially having started to count 1 0. You start 0 1, it's a different story. Could catch him off guard. I know. You go. Yes, he did, says the first base umpire, Chris Cuccioni. Well, I guess tenured San Diego Padre, Will Myers, just love this ride with his team. He's been used different ways. He's played a bunch of different positions. In fact, he's pitched a little bit this year. Two balls, two strikes. Just feels like this game got away so quickly from the Mets in the top of the fifth inning with the four spot. Generally, when you're managing these games, these are the things you want to try to avoid. Yes. Don't let your starter give up seven runs, but it happens so quickly. Paying a lot of money to be here, you want to avoid a game like this too with the other team scoring all those runs. It's Myers. 
pulls that foul. Yeah, you're still within reach after the bell home run, but the Grisham home run again with two strike, uh, two outs on that 1-1 one, one count. I think that's the one that Max stops trusting his fastball. A 94 mile per hour pitch. Grisham was able to turn on it. Swing and a miss for Will Myers. So we know what the Dodgers did this year, and the Padres were 5 and 14 against them. But when you face a team that that's good, does it condition you and train you for a Scherzer DeGrom thing? It's an interesting thought. It really is. And the dragon up the freeway, right? Well, that's what the, the Padres owner called the Dodgers, trying to slay that dragon. But this is the offense also when they acquired Bell that they thought they were going to get power. Mm -hmm. Grisham has had a terrible offensive season, elite defensively, and that's the reason he's in there. You start all new. That's what Bob Melvin told us. A new beginning, most likely what he told the team. They've taken it to heart. 2-0 to Hassan Kim. And this Padre team, with all the moves that Preller made, I mean, they ignited the San Diego baseball community. You know, they, they are the equal of Seattle and the other great cities that are in this postseason as far as their enthusiasm. But, the blessing is you get into the playoffs as a wild card team. The curse is you don't get a game at home, which not only penalizes the team, but in a lot of ways it penalizes the fan base. You, you don't get a home game until you get to the next round. Oh, four. <laughs> you need to take my bat because he was sort of thinking, do I go to first with it? Can I give it to somebody else? To walk to Hassan Kim, and it happens a lot to hitters because his home dugout's on the on the first base side. So he takes off. He's like, "Wait a second. It was very polite. <laughs> Came up in the KBO. A lot of polite people. Yeah, except the bat flip thing. I mean, that, well, that's <laughs> it's cultural. It's different there, right? Yes. I mean, it, just, it is amazing how the celebration part is really does become cultural. Different cultures experience baseball differently. Of course, Kim's excellent play at shortstop. Hey! There was conversation prior to Tatis getting the performance enhancing drug suspension. Like, what do you do with him? Like, do you put him back at shortstop? And Bob Melvin was telling us during the season while we were doing Sunday Night Baseball, well, he's going to play some short, but he's probably going to play center field, too. Kim goes. Oh. Throw down. Tag made. Hassan Kim running in a six run game, thrown out by Tomas Nito. Landor got it down before the hand hit the bag. There'll be no review. Nets continue to try to chip away after this. Game twos tomorrow. Rays Guardians get it started at noon Eastern ESPN two. Mariners Jays four Eastern one Pacific on ESPN. Padres and Mets City Field. Those three games are on ESPN. Deportes as well. And the Phillies Cardinals eight thirty Eastern seven thirty Central on ESPN two. All four games are available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Watching the postseason is Alex Cora, the manager of the Red Sox, with his brother Joey, of course, on the Mets staff. McNeil will lead things off. Here in the bottom of the six, down by six, and McNeil pulls that foul. What you guys make of the first three wild card game ones? What stood out to you? The pitching early on. I mean, with Shane Bieber and McClanahan, they put on a show. Yeah. One mistake by each guy, one had a runner on base, but that was complete dominance. You can say the same about Luis Castillo. What an acquisition the Mariners made at the deadline, getting Luis Castillo dynamite today. They jumped all over Alec Manoa. 
Seattle's got something going, and then Ryan Helsley just blew up for the Cardinals out of that bullpen, allow the Phillies to rally, and they got a win. Could really sympathize with Helsley. You know, you could see him just kind of the anxiety taking over. I had a similar experience myself with my first start in postseason. Started bouncing balls and just couldn't get him out of the dirt. Oh. And I wonder how much that injury that he had sustained to his finger really interfered with his ability to throw strikes. One inning, four earned runs, 35 pitches, 15 of them were strikes. Got a 2-1 count here. Darvish to McNeil at 326 this year to win the batting title. And he pops this one up. Machado should have a play in foul territory. And it does. So what, what, what was that like? Like, is that a... Is that a mental thing, a physical thing, when you just kept putting the ball in the dirt? You know, it's you, you keep telling yourself all your cues to slow yourself down, but the game keeps speeding up. The more you tell your, yourself to slow down, the more it speeds up on you. And it just unravels in a hurry, and it's hard to make adjustments on the fly. Your arm just goes faster than your body. And in a playoff game, you realize now, this is not a one-game wild card, which they used to be, but it's three. Do you realize like the margin for error is slimmer? I mean, are you trying to be more perfect? Absolutely. Every pitch is so much more magnified in postseason. Carl, you were asking about impressions from the early uh, playoff games today. That's what we were reminded of in the way Terry Francona managed today. Like. You know, with his closer going to him in the eighth inning. He does not mess around when it comes to just jumping for the jugular in the postseason. Classe came in. He was really good. That game took two hours and 17 minutes. Hey. They pitch quick, but if there's a pitch clock, is that a one hour and 58 minute game? <laughs> that makes you wonder, right? <laughs> well, Shane Bieber, I mean, just incredible. I mean, he's not a 100 mile an hour guy. Nope. But boy, can he spin a slider. Alonzo into right field. Soto's not going to be able to get there. And Pete Alonzo is aboard. It's nice to see the art of pitching. A little kind Greg of, Maddox in there. Kind of coming back around. More and more we're seeing a little bit more of that. Pete Alonzo with a little bit more closed stance than usual. Last few months, gets jammed on this one, but he's so strong he gets it out there. Well, speaking of strong, here's Vogel back. Some off breaking ball. Is there a number that you want to get to if you're the Mets down six? Is there a number that would concern Bob Melvin and the Padres? Is it 7 3? Is it 7 4? Get to four. It's hard to string along consecutive hits. Vogel back. This one to Soto on a line. He's there. Vogel back hit it hard 100 miles an hour off the bat. But there are two down. Need to focus on the game? Just tell Siri, turn on Do Not Disturb. So, of course, Siri Homer today, which led to the entire, hey, Siri, do you know who hit the first Homer in the postseason? Siri did. So Siri patted himself in the back. In a sense. Of course, the defensive speedster bat at the bottom of the order hits the first home run. <laughs> back to Marte. Swings at the first one and fouls it back. So far, just looking at the reaction of Starling Marte with his swings, doesn't seem like that finger is bothering him at all. As a matter of fact, just took a cut right there and held the bat with one hand, and it was the right hand. Afterward, the bad one. See, right? Let's it go. He's fine. And that was the issue that the Mets were telling everybody he can't grip a ball, let alone a bat. Nearly got hit there. I will say this this is a big test for him, and 
maybe that's the big reason why they put him in the six hole. If it wasn't going to feel well, then you don't, if you want to substitute for him, you don't want to impact the top of the order. Right. But tomorrow, I would not be surprised if starting Marte is back at the top of the order. Blake Snell will be on the mound for San Diego, and certainly what appears, given the situation now, DeGrom will be for the Mets. Soto, another one. Darvish making a living getting the ball in the air and keeping it in the yard. Through six. Christian Nola Profar when we come back at 7-1 San Diego. Left, stay connected to the action this postseason. Why? Coverage beyond the expected from T-Mobile. Stream your team home or away or in the air on us with T-Mobile. Trains to get, work to get up for. Six-run game. Seth Lugo now on the mound for the Mets. And Grisham hits this one hard. Going over Marte, and he runs it down. What a play by starting Marte in right field to track that line shot. Great contact there. 102.5 miles per hour off Grisham's bat. Just the launch wasn't enough. I and mean, when you have the speed of a center fielder playing right, like Starling Marte. Watch that right hand on that wall, Eddie. Grisham thinks it's over his head. Look at Petey. <laughs> One thing that the Mets analytics team has done is have conversations with all their outfielders, especially Brandon Nimmo, about playing deeper. Starling Marte, who's accustomed to playing center field, also plays deep in right field. And it's a big right field hey. here. Yeah, that's been a common theme this year across the big leagues. Stay away from doubles and triples as opposed to singles that fall in front of you. Kind of a reversal of what we saw when we played. Do you remember Andrew Jones playing so shallow with the Braves? I would love to see Andrew have a bat boy deliver a positioning card to uh -huh. him in the outfield. Always played very shallow. You know, all the Braves pitchers, Greg Maddox and Tom Glavitt, wanted him shallow to take away those singles. But well, his ability to run balls down to the gap and get balls over his head, wouldn't you say, move, move, move in? I trust you're going to go back and get it. They didn't give up many homers. Strike three there to Austin Nola. Joe Girardi's triple in 1996 comes oh, to you, mind, Oh, you like that one. <laughs> Get your game on at MLBShop.com. Authentic on-field caps, tees, hoodies, and more. Get all your postseason gear and wear what the champs wear at the official source, MLBShop.com. Well, it's just hard to watch all these faces. These kids, they're just bummed out. First time since 16 that the Mets are back in the postseason. Can't wipe the smile off that one. Yes. The question's going to be, obviously without knowing the outcome, is, is how much damage did that Brave series do to this team? Because they did bounce back in the next series to score a bunch of runs, you know, and obviously the Braves won the game they needed to 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 clinch the series and then ultimately know that they were going to finish in a tie in the regular season. But how much damage did the Braves sweep do? Well, I think the damage is the extra week rest they could have gotten for Max Scherzer and Jacob deGrom and lined up their pitching. I think it showed up tonight. We the, the, Clearly, Max Scherzer is trying to pitch through something here. I admire him. He's a gamer. He's always been that way. But that wasn't 100 percent Max Scherzer that we saw tonight. And what they're seeing is 100 percent of you Darvish. Mm. Oh. 
of an offer there. They I mean, it. a ten and a half game lead in June. You hear this conversation: Did they blow it, or did the Braves just beat them? And the winning percentages, of course, by both were very high. The Mets ended up with like a 95 win percentage over the amount of games that the Braves ended up with a hundred plus win percentage. Oh, that one misses inside. Well, the new playoff format really it, it has played a big part in all of this. For that reason alone, the first round bye that you get, that, that the Braves now get to enjoy. By the way, guys, if you're a San Diego Padre fan, you're realizing the player that makes everything tick here, and right now it's been Jerickson Profar. He's been outstanding for the last month and a half of the season, getting on base at a high clip. Tonight already on base three times at a single and a home run. A big home run, a three-run shot. Well, this is certainly a different Padres team. If Josh Bell's going to hit, like you said, Jerk Support, Profar's going to get on base. And then this guy, if he's ready to have a big postseason, Padres are a whole different team. Yeah, and they're doing that with Soto 0 for 3 tonight. Manny was 0 for 2 prior to hitting that homer. Soto's going to be 0 for 4 tonight. And they still have seven runs. 0 for 4 with three rollovers to the second baseman. Laced deep to left field, and this one may get out of here. It does! Bell on a 3 1 pitch. And now Profar sends this one to right field. It's headed to the corner. And that's fair, and it's gone! Back to see. Wildcard series. This way. Comes on a 3-1. That one is laced deep to left field. And this one may get out of here. It does! Bell on a 3-1 pitch. And now Profar sends this one to right field. It's headed to the corner. And that's fair. And it's gone! Back to see. That was Bear Grylls. You can catch his National Geographic series. It runs wild, running wild, streaming now on Disney+. Plus. For the five seed, the Padres lead the four seed Mets 7-1. to one. Hugh Darvish has been dynamite. An earned run, three Ks, 11 flyouts. Max Scherzer tonight, seven earned runs, four home runs allowed. Most of his very, very good postseason career. So Darvish into the seventh. And continues the trend of these really good starters today. He's the fifth starter in the wild card game to pitch into the seventh inning or later. Shift back towards guys going a little deeper, maybe. It's one thing Darvish has done all year long, really. And as you said, his pitch count in great shape right here. And you go back to the first inning, first and third, got out of it. Second inning, runner at third, after the stolen bases, the two got out of it. And then, as you said, he tends to get better and better. If you can get him early, you got to get him. Yeah, that's what Mud Grant taught us, talked about. When Starvish gets through the first couple of innings, he tends to really settle in. 33 pitches through the first inning. Oh, Since good. then, 45. San Diego bullpen is quiet. Think about the three game series. You can save some of your bullpen bullets. You know that DeGrom is going to be on the mound. It's going to be a challenge, but you have Snell and you'll likely have most of those really good, strong bullpen arms. Darvish misses high. Three balls and a strike on the 80th pitch. It'll be Mark Canna. Eduardo Escobar, and then scheduled Tomas Nito. 20-year-old Francisco Alvarez is on the roster. And we've seen a lot of 20, 21-year-old guys impact postseason series. 
It's the high strike call, three balls, two strikes. <laughs> you want to know the biggest difference in the strike zone from 20 years ago to now? That's it right there, the, the high breaking balls that are called nowadays. Darvis is yet to give up a walk. One hit by pitch. Canna. Foul. And he's doing it with the slider, the cutter, the fastball. He'll use it at any count. And that's why these guys are taking this, these type of cuts. Not a lot of exit velocity from the Mets. That right there, 3 2, the confidence of being able to throw any pitch at any count gets this reaction from a big league hitter. A great shot right there of how close Darvish stays for how long he does and hides the ball. And yes, check swing. There have been games where he's relied on his four seamer. Tonight, clearly this at bat, cutter slider. Can is just all locked up at the plate. All locked up, and look at the pitch sequence. He's not challenging him with a fastball. And the thing is, once you start looking soft and softer, the slider, different velo, 82, 81, up, still hunting the fastball. A rare extended at bat, too, for a med hitter. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat. Only the third that a batter has seen six or more pitches. What does he do on a 3 2? Kind of stands the reason, you know, we talked to Mark Khanna before the game, and he kind of loads and stays in there. That's why he has so many hit by, by pitches. So a front door cutter or a front door breaking ball is a good strategy to him. Kind of locks him up a little bit. You see another check swing. Not sure if that's a strike or not on another high cutter. Guys, every pitch in this at bat has been middle up. There hasn't been anything down in the zone. That's done on purpose. That's exactly what he wants to do. But he's doing it with just two pitches. And so far, Hannah's has not been able to pull the trigger cleanly on those pitches. It's like he's not seeing it well. Tenth pitch of the at bat on the way to Canna, who was drafted by the Marlins in the seventh round out of Cal. Two year, $26.5 million deal with an option for the third year. All front door cutters. You know, when an NFL team has this unbeaten streak going, the Dolphins, Alex Cora is in the building. Do you think now with the number of pitches that are being seen, he starts to think back to his big at bat with all those pitches, ended up with a homer? Is that entering his mind at all? I've seen this before. Uh, five more pitches and we'll, might get there. Number 11 on a 3-2 pitch. The whole thing almost looks like it's in slow motion. Yes. Look, look, he's so disciplined with his approach, right? He stays in there. He doesn't give an inch. Very methodical between pitches. This one he caught out front. But he had nothing behind it. Everything was front foot. Seven so, straight. Seven straight foul balls. And the exit velo on all of them under 85 miles an hour. That time he actually challenged him with a four seam fastball. And Canna puts it up on the infield. And Kim nearly bangs into and does Jake Cronenworth. <laughs> Blew him and the baseball all the way to the second base side of the bat. Carl, you were referring to, of course, Alex Cora's 18 pitch at bat. Yes. All right, 2004 that ended with a home run off Matt Clement. Yeah, we only got to 12. Jake, but yep, I see what you did. It's your ball. Some reports out of Boston that uh, they're re engaging 
with Sandra Bogarts. Well, that's good news for Red Sox fans because Xander Bogarts, such a good hitter, so tailor-made for Fenway Park, too. So quick middle in, can turn on anybody's fastball. Banging off the wall or over the wall. And if they can convince Bogarts to sign a long-term deal before he reaches free agency, that'll be the first time a Scott Boris client does that at the end of October, early November. Yeah. Nola and Machado maybe getting Darvish a little breather out there on the mound after that lengthy get back. Absolutely, and that's the leadership, though, that Manny Machado has provided the entire season. I think it all stems from last year when he called out Fernando Tatis Jr. in the dugout. miss a little bit up high. You know, I mentioned that Darvish has really exploited the top of the zone with breaking stuff, and today's umpires or the today's strike zone calls those pitches as opposed to more margin off the plate that we saw back in the 90s. Some more than others, Eduardo. No kidding. Off the plate a little bit. Just, just a bit outside. It's the iPhone strike zone, you know? You lay it down on its side, that was 1990. <laughs> Vertical, horizontal. Vertical, it's uh, 2022. It's the same same square square, square right. footage, right? Just He has missed consistently now, up and out, to the 33-year-old Venezuelan Eduardo Escobar. Twin, White Sox, a Diamondback, and still, in spite of what we're watching from Darvish, no action yet in that Padre bullpen. 3-1. He will not give in, and again, breaking pitch right there, slider. Hugh <laughs> Darvish stays closed just about as long as any pitcher in the big leagues. That double hitch leg kick almost keeps his back or his shoulder turned until the very last minute, longer than just about anybody else. That, that creates that deception. Robert Suarez starting some soft toss. Escobar, right field, Soto going back. Reaches up, can't make the play. Bounces off the wall, and Escobar adds a double to his home run tonight. Wind continues to blow strongly towards right field. And Juan Soto misjudged this one. There was a few pitches ago where Darvish walked off the mound and looked like maybe he had gotten a little tight back or shoulder, so they bring the trainer out to talk with him. Looked like he said the right thing. Grant, maybe? Back leg. There was a pitch earlier in which he came off the mound and was walking around. Oh, he's locking up. Ruben Niebla. Luis Guillorme is the pinch hitter, and that may be what this conversation is more about than, than Darvish's physical health. Also allows Suarez for more time to get loose. One for seven, runners in scoring position. Go 
Dorme has been terrific defensively in a variety of positions for the Mets this season. And Marte was out third base. McNeil went out in the outfield. He moved over to second base. Swings and misses at that one from Darvish. He's thrown 20 pitches this inning. Looking down at his right foot, his right leg. Assume this is the trust factor. That was the Melvin interview with Buster only early in the game. Like, he's going to do what he's going to do. And there, a nasty breaking pitch to get Luis Guillorme. Threw a 67 mile an hour quasi Ephus curveball in there for the strikeout. Well, that's what we've seen all night is the variance in velocity on all of his pitches. This one by far the slowest curveball he's thrown all night. That's, that's not fair. Just want to let you know that is not fair as a hitter. Five inches more drop than the average curveball. Fourth strikeout of the night and only his first since the fourth inning. Slap down the line to the seats. Brandon Nimmo. You got 97 in your pocket and you throw 67. Should get a ticket for that. Good night for Escobar with a homer and a double, but he's been about the only shining star for the Mets offensively. You Darvish deserves all the credit in the world. Trying to get through the seventh. Oh. A lot of interest in this guy. Brandon Nimmo comes to the offseason. We get a lot of callers, that's for sure. Big gap in right center field with Grisham shaded towards left and shallow in left is Profar. Oh, 20. Darvish misses outside with a splitter. You know, the other thing we're seeing, Coney, in baseball, too, a lot of these older pitchers having great success. It's, it's not just the young man's game on the mound. There's a lot of veteran pitchers who are pitching really well. Kind of like Tom Brady, right? Everybody's learning how to take care of their body a little better. Biomechanics plays a part in that. And all the advancements that the pitchers have with their labs, etc., and and video. I mean, video is a game changer. The use of it. And when you're married to it, like Darvish, you're probably learning a lot. You're still learning a lot at 36 years old. Learning how your body moves better than ever. Yeah. Two and one popped up. Kim is there. Darvish gets through seven innings and allows just one run. It's like playing wiffle ball in the backyard. Hit that. Not fair. The 2022 wildcard series on ESPN presented by Hankook Tire Evolutionized for EV Fitment. Electrified Hankook. And in part by Jersey Mike's Subs. Be a sub above. I haven't needed many subs tonight. The starters have been outstanding. Manny Machado rocking a pose there because the Padres have come in and imposed their will on this game. Jumping Max Scherzer for a Bunch of home runs, four of them. The game really Hi. never in doubt after the fifth inning. James McCann is now in to catch behind home plate. 
And the lefty on the mound is now David Peterson for New York. Swing and a miss for Manny. Seven and five, two, three eighty-three ERA on the season for Peterson. Challenged it with ninety-five up high and sends Machado back to the bench. All right, boys, what's what's the uh, bounce back plan? Like if you're the New York Mets, I mean, how, how do you get up off the mat? A, you have to grom. That's a good thing right there. Yeah, that's that's it, right? Hey, there's your bounce back plan right there. I got B as well to Grom. It's all with the starting pitcher. You know, you set the tone. We saw it tonight. But it helps, you know, when you draw first blood. And we also saw that tonight with the Padres. Yeah, continuing a trend, too, that we saw start in the 2021 postseason. Again, it sounds obvious, but the team that, that hits the home runs more often wins the game. to right field right to the corner it goes and boy Marte has been very busy and he makes the nice play. Take a look at tonight's moment to remember brought to you by the Wells Fargo active cash credit card. Max Scherzer gave up four of them. Josh Bell got strong. So did Jerickson Profar. And then they got a little louder and that one was on a line from Machado, so they're perfecting their celebrations. San Diego slug, which was questioned coming in, not a problem tonight. Awfully impressive. Find out exactly what's up with Darvish, I'm sure, at a post-game press conference, if it was a cramp or something with his Blake, because he'll be in there answering questions about his performance tonight, which was outstanding. Uh. There you go, Coney. There's baseball 2022 in the postseason. 15 of the 23 runs scored come as a result of a home run. Power pitching versus power hitting. A head on collision between the two. And if you're just a tick off, right? I mean, if you are a pitcher and you're just a tick off, then the power at the plate is going to beat you. Strike three there as Cronenworth gets caught looking. So side retired quickly. Emma Stone, TV star, TV star in the house, by the way, wearing a Padre jacket. Here on ESPN, presented by Han Cook Tire. Reminder, the series all continue tomorrow, four game twos. Rays Guardians, noon Eastern, ESPN2. Tristan McKenzie will go, and we got ourselves a, a full weekend coming up. The lineup, Mariners, Jays, and four Padres, Mets, Phillies, Cards. Full day of college football starts noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. The 118th Red River Showdown. Longhorns and Sooners will be played at the Cotton Bowl in our week five Monday night football matchup. The Raiders... And Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Your guy looked really good in his last outing. Hey! Mahomes was outstanding. I'm sure you were locked into that. Yeah, he can do it all. Razzle dazzle. I mean, he's an exciting player to watch. Unpredictable. Robert Suarez handles the eighth inning for the Padres tonight. Lindor, McNeil, Alonzo. Yeah, Mahomes is like the U Darvish of quarterbacks, right? With all the angles and deliveries and all that. Spin moves, little shuffle passes. Yeah, changes arm angle. Changes changes hands every now and then. Lindor hits it in the air, and another one in the air and out by Padres pitchers. 13, Darvish had, and there's the first one in the air. Suarez. So there you go, Coney. This was referring to perhaps a, a change in philosophy. Maybe it's the fact that there are three games and not just a one-game wild card. So you're trying to save your bullpen. But four 
starts of seven plus innings. Who Darvish. said starting pitching was dead? Yeah. Or going deep into the game. I think a big key for the Padres is because they scored seven runs and they were able to limit so far the Mets to one. You're looking at not having to use Hader tonight. Sure. Hader, Martinez. Slapped in the left, coming hard, and a nice running catch. May have lost it in the lights for a second. <laughs> fact, that is now confirmed. Research confirms lost in lights. Tell you what, though, that big smile looked like the lights. It did. It's really good to see Jerickson profile. He gave us a scare earlier this year when he collided with Kim in short left field, but that is just a bad feeling. The great feeling is feeling it in the glove. That's a oh. temporary bad feeling. The needle before the Novocaine kicks in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tony, you keep talking about it. It's all about Jacob DeGrom tomorrow night. It was all about you, Darvish. The home runs for sure, but Darvish quieted this offense, and as a result, 42,000 people. Andre pitchers have allowed the ball to be hit in the air, and they have ended up in gloves. It took seven pitches for us to get through that inning. Got yeah, DeGrom's on deck. 7-1. The Padre will show you how the Phillies shocked the cards. Latest updates ahead of Sunday's NFL matchups on the injury side. We got some winners for college football. All right, back to you, City Field. All right, no breaks on that Sports Center edition tonight, Scott. No breaks. Back here with Eduardo Perez, David Cohen, Buster Only, Michael Givens. It's a good sign for the Mets. Question how they were going to construct their roster, how many pitches, and would Givens be a part of it? And he is back with the team, which is great, and he's on the mound now. That's the good news. The bad news is he's on the mound trailing by six. Ninth inning starts, and he fires one at 94 miles an hour from that sort of three-quarter arm angle. They get ahead 0-1. Myers Kim Grisham due for San Diego. Seven runs, seven hits, no errors. That's one run. They have not committed an error either. You know, Carl, I was talking to the legendary Jay Horowitz before the game tonight, longtime PR director for the Mets, now the alumni director. Yep. And he wanted me to send a message out uh, for Ed Hearn, who needs a yes. kidney transplant. Former Met, 86 Mets, catcher, right behind Gary Carter. So obviously, looking for a kidney transplant is a tough spot, but if you, if you want to help, or if you know anybody who can help, Jay uh, encouraged us to kind of get the word out. You can <clears throat> get in touch with Jay Horowitz through the Mets and find out the procedures. If, you know of anybody or and can, I've, can I've think of any the, way to help. No, I've seen Jay tweet tweet about that too, looking for help. You know, I was actually traded for Ed Hearn. Thought so. There's always that connection. And Ed's a great guy, part of the 86 Mets. Kim, yeah, he hooks one. And that's going to get down into left field. Hassan Kim will head to second base. And here's the throw, and he's in there with a the double. Again, the bottom third of this order for the Padres tonight has been great. Kim now has reached base three times. Single a walk, a double. Grisham with a homer. Austin Nola with a double in the ninth spot. Yeah, a lot of production, a lot of slug, and a lot of turning the lineup over. It's exactly what you want. Bob Melvin has been getting it from the bottom half of the order, and that was going to be the big question mark for the San Diego Padres.
Bottom number there, the Mets one for nine with runners in scoring Hi. position tonight. Look, there's a lot of this was the Brave series all over again feel to it. I'd love to know what the pulse of the Met fan is going into tomorrow night with DeGrom on the mound and a Padres swinging the bats the way they are. Comes down to a one game series on the Mets side. You just play a series of one games and your backs are against the wall. So there is no turning back. You can push it to a game three. Hand it over to Chris Bassett. But Darvish, right? The first two starts he's made against the Mets were both seven inning gems, and now you add another. So his three starts against the Mets this year have resulted in unbelievable success in numbers. Well, this is what we talked about the Padres on their side. Their pitching staff is well suited for these kind of series, too. You have Blake Snell and Joe Musgrove ready to go. What you love for Darvis, too, guys, is some redemption with this start, right? Because, of course, he started Game 7 of the 2017 World Series. He got knocked around by the Houston Astros. Eduardo, you talked about how you felt like at that point he, he was tipping his pitches. Very different-looking Darvis tonight in a postseason game. It's one of the cool things about baseball. You see players evolve during the course of their careers as they get reps in the postseason. Oh. Three and two. Kone taking advantage of your natural abilities, coupled with your desire to continue to educate yourself, take advantage of the things that are afforded you. You can keep doing this longer than perhaps we were able to as as major leaguers a couple of decades ago. It's a great point. You Dar you Jarvis is 36 years old. In some ways better than ever. Givens will run right at Kim, and now he's going to get into a rundown. The ball's dropped. They'll flip it. Tag is still made. Lindor bobbled it, dropped it for a second, and he flipped it to Escobar, and that gets Kim. Great play all around to be able to get Kim at third. 1-6-5. Hey, one thing. Kim's got a lot of dirt in the drawers. He's caught a belt buckle sliding in a second and here he goes again to the dirt. Well he was hung out to dry and the bobble almost saved him but a nice recovery. Really good recovery. You're in no man's land as a runner. 7-1 going on contact no problem there. Big swing from Austin Nolan, 94 from Gibbons. We got to do some work on that uniform, though, Kim. That's a mess right now. So what you're saying is, Mom would be mad if you got home from the game and you got a uniform that looked like that. And She's got to wash it. Uh, it's a good question. Was Joan Cohn mad when you came home dirty? Or was that a sign like, hey, man, you, you were grinding it today. You had a good game. A little bit of both. You wanted to know that it did it mean something. Or, <laughs> or, you, or was it eyewash? <laughs> Fake hustle? Fake hustle doesn't work for Joan Cohn. No. Oof. Big swing and a miss and a ball. Wasn't close to. Givens will walk off the mound. The Mets fans that are here are looking for a huge rally. Padres trying to finish it off and go up one zip in the series. Three's game twos, Rays, Guardians, Tristan McKenzie on the mound, and Tyler Glass now gets a start for the Rays, noon Eastern ESPN2, Mariners, Jays, 4 o'clock Eastern time, one Pacific ESPN, Padres and Mets at City Field. Those three games are on ESPN Deportes as well. And the Phillies Cardinals, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central, ESPN 2. All four also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Here, Luis Garcia, Daniel Vogelback. Heavyweight matchup right here in the ninth, and Vogel swings the first one. Another high, lazy fly ball. There's been a lot of that early in the game. 
Hugh Darvich was outstanding. They had runners at third a few times. Alonso punched out. Well, he can make you swing and miss, but he can also stay off the barrel in terms of contact management as well. He was really a magician tonight. When you think about all the different looks he gave, all the weak contact that he produced. You can just tell by the sounds off the bat. A little bit in, a little bit off the end. Definitely not a lot off the barrels. So it's amazing, you just look back on the game, and the Mets are one for 11 with runners on base. How important the first inning was. First and third, and you get out of it. Second inning, runner at third, and you get out of it. It's very easy to look at the homers and all that, but there are little things that lead to victories. That was huge. It was huge, but what you have on the mound is an absolute stud. Yeah, no, his ability to get out of it was huge. And I'll tell you this, if you're a San Diego Padre fan, you've got Blake Snell tomorrow. We can talk all we want about who the Mets have, and he could probably have been the best pitcher, but right now, Blake Snell's pitching a lot better than Jacob DeGrom as of late, and that's the reality. That's fact, and talking to Snell before the game, he, you can sense, too, that he's very comfortable and confident landing that breaking pitch of his to set up that fastball of his. He's been really, really solid. Always a question, three-game series, you got to win two. How do you bounce back from a loss like this? Off the glove, Marte will beat it out. Starling Marte, in his return, has done just about everything. That'll be his second hit of the night. Talk about fighting it off. Right on the hands, takes just, let's get that last bounce was right off where the foot lands. He came up on Garcia. No chance after that. Ninth appearance of the season, obviously first in the postseason for the righty Garcia. 64 appearances out of the bullpen for San Diego, which led them 16th most among the National League relievers. 20 holds, which was sixth in the league. Same as Adam Ottavino. That one will get to the backstop. Marte will head down to second base. One thing you would assume that the manager of the team that's down, not Melvin, he doesn't have to change anything, and he's been pretty, pretty consistent with the lineup, etc. Is that maybe Marte to the two-hole, given his ability to hit? But other than that, nothing significant. Do you see? Do you see the 20-year-old? Do you see Alvarez against the lefty? Does he start? I think Buck's going to start him. I think that's the reason why he's on the roster. Hanna hits this one hard. Center fielder Grisham going back and now ranging over to his left. He'll make the play and they'll allow Marte to scamper over to third. And if you're a Padre fan again, DeGrom's given up three runs in each of the last four starts. Snell has given up in the last 25 innings, 10 hits, two runs, and 32 strikeouts. Winner of this series. Gets the Los Angeles Dodgers. The winner of the Phillies Cardinals will get the Atlanta Braves. Well, nonetheless, it will be a huge start for Jacob deGrom, who has talked about possibly his opt-out in yep. his contract. Is that potentially the last game in a, as a Met for deGrom tomorrow night? A lot, of, a lot of things riding tomorrow, not just the future of the Met season. Garcia's last pitch was 100 miles an hour. And the 1-0. That was 99. We met a nice couple last night at dinner from San Diego who were wondering why, like on a marquee out here, they saw 
Juan Soto and not Manny Machado. They were a little confused by that, given Manny's been the MVP. Hit, a, hit one 110.5 miles per hour off the bat. Left here in a hurry. There they are, probably pushing each other this season a little bit, certainly since he arrived. Machado has been so good all season long. Swing and a miss up in the zone with some movement at 99. And a strike away from taking game one of this wild card series. Like a pure shooter in basketball, I mean Machado with one of the most beautiful right-handed swings. Yeah. Just aesthetically that you'll see anywhere. One, two. That's outside. San Diego came in, got two in the first, one in the second, four runs in the fifth. Emma Stone is up. She is ready to celebrate a Padre win. Oh, we do it. Not so fast. Just a whole hum, 100 mile an hour runner, you know, up and away with <laughs> movement. Some ways it's never been harder to hit in the, in the big leagues because right. of relievers like this. But it was interesting, those strikeout numbers on the list that Scherzer was on, most of those guys are pitching at this time. They're modern day pitchers as a result of the sort of swing and miss approach and you know going for it with the home runs and not caring about the strikeouts. You know, that list is likely to be all modern day pitchers. Josh Hader is out in the Padre bullpen. And if you're wondering after the hat went on, does he throw a pitch? Yeah, he's actually throwing a few pitches out there. Yeah, but the message from the bullpen, uh, from the dugout is do not get hot, just lob, stay loose just in case something crazy happens. Certainly learning how to warm up is an art for all relievers. Francisco Alvarez is coming to the plate. And as a result, Mondiabla is going to go out and talk to Luis Garcia. And you know what this tells me? This tells me most likely he's going to start tomorrow. Buck Showalter making sure he gets his feet wet tonight. A 7-1 game. That way he knows the feel of what it is to already be in a postseason game before his first at-bat tomorrow. A lot of thunder in that bat with Alvarez, who set the minor league world on fire with his power. He's got a couple of hits, including a homer with the Mets. Buster, just as Hader gets loose, what have the Padres learned about Hader? Because when he came over, wasn't very effective, but he certainly has been recently. What they learned? Yeah, in their conversations with Hader, what they and looking at the data, what they've determined is is that he is much more effective when he's rested. In other words, we saw him with Milwaukee becoming one of the best relievers in baseball often go more than three outs often uh, you know pitch two in a maybe two plus innings since he joined the Padres he's basically been a three out pitcher and they make sure they get him rest between appearances now here you go Francisco Alvarez He 
Bader hasn't appeared since Monday against San Francisco. He went two-thirds of an inning and threw 14 pitches. Brandon Nimmo left-handed hitter on deck. Alvarez. That's in there for a strike. Number one prospect. And they will be seeing Francisco Alvarez for years here in New York. Short guy, full of power. His buck, Joe Walker likes to joke, he's got muscles on his toes. Oh no! You got Eduardo Escobar down there at first base saying he didn't go, and you just said that he did, but that certainly indicates he did go. Now Garcia ahead one and two. Hunt. Called strike three, that's how it ends. An awfully impressive pitching performance by the Padres, especially their starter Darvish. Four homers against Scherzer, and they make a statement here at City Field, winning game one, seven to one. Well, certainly they scored first, drew first blood, and then they added on late, and that guy was fantastic tonight. You Darvish. You look at what they did against Scherzer. Very impressive, hitting the ball out of the ballpark and doing it on the first pitch to add on runs. We'll see you here from City Field tomorrow, 7.30, noon Eastern, our first wild card game. For Eduardo Perez, David Cohn, Buster Olney, Sarah Langs, our producer, Andy Jacobson, I'm Carl Ravage. It's Sports Center time.